Hello everybody, today I would like to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers for reaching 10,000 subscribers on this channel. That is such an amazing milestone. I never thought that I would get there with this channel and sharing lighting with all of you, but uh, thank you to all of my subscribers and future subscribers and future viewers for growing the channel the way it has and reaching this amazing milestone. I really appreciate every single one of you. So to go along with that, I want to share with you a very interesting fixture that I got a couple weeks ago now. I've since cleaned it up and refurbished it and uh, got it to working condition. So I want to share with you all those steps. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that in addition to whatever else I may find that I'd like to include in this video. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that interesting fixture. Hello everybody, today I have something really cool to share with all of you. This was literally just taken down minutes ago from a pole outside my bedroom window from the property next door. I've looked at this thing for many years and always wondered what this is, because it's so unique. Look at it. I can't say I've ever seen a light like this before. It has a standard arm and a very unique fixture design. So as I said, this was just taken down minutes ago. I heard someone working outside, so I looked out the window, and wouldn't you know it, there's a gentleman taking down this light. It hasn't worked ever since I've been here, um, so I'm not sure what's inside, but he was taking it down, and I thought, you know, it never hurts to ask. So I went outside and asked him if he would be willing to give it to me, and uh, the very nice man uh, found it a little odd that uh, I collect lighting, and I can totally understand that. But a big thank you to him for letting me have this light. It'll get cleaned up and added to my collection. This is a really cool design. It has kind of a, a shrunken NEMA head. We have a photo cell on the front. This is plastic. I thought it would be metal. And we have a closed bottom refractor. We have our pretty standard for this style of light, at least its mounting arm and the brackets that he used to hold it to the circular pole. So, very unique, and a big thank you to the gentleman that was taking it down. I really, really appreciate it. So, let's go ahead and take a look inside the fixture. Upon first opening, we have the refractor itself and a medium base socket. And the inside looks very uh, reminiscent of a gumball refractor, or reflector rather, with all the little ribs. That's very unique. It looks like we need a screwdriver to take off the two screws and we'll see what's hiding inside. After hammering at the screws a little bit, because this fixture has definitely served a life in the Pacific Northwest, um, we have one screw and I uh, snapped off the head of the other screw, but uh, we'll drill it out or fix it somehow. But as we take off our, our reflector assembly, we find a cardboard piece. So let me take that out. It's got some moss on it here. Oh, I see the, um, the screw is holding it in still. Let's see here. I'll get it out. Okay, so let's see what we can learn at first glance. I would say this is definitely high pressure sodium because we do have some type of igniter assembly here. And of course we have a ballast, doesn't look mercury vapor. We have our photo cell, it's by Area Lighting Research. Let's see. That wants to stay there for the moment. So I'm not entirely sure what wattage this ballast is. It probably says on it. I'll try to find out. But here we have our first look at the fixture itself. And hopefully the next time you see this, well, absolutely the next time you see this, it'll be cleaned up and we'll turn it on. One last clip here. I decided to take out the ballast and once you know it, it does have a sticker on it. It's 70 watts, high pressure sodium. I'm at the shop today to clean up 
our light here. And I wanted to try to get as much information off of the sticker as I possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and take a, a flashlight here. And uh, hopefully it is not too bright. It's probably going to be too bright. But you can make out some things um, at an angle here. You can kind of see at the top an oval and an H-U-B. So this is definitely a Hubble made fixture. You can see that must be amps and volts. What is that? B-A-L? Ballast, maybe? And then uh, you can see L-A-M for lamp. So you can very faintly see the indents from the original sticker here. Now, on the side, you can still see a little bit of information. Like it says, you know, uh, whatever supply wires. The top is pretty much gone. We don't have much here on the other side. So that's all the information we're gonna get off of this sticker. Again, here is the ballast. Let's turn this off. It is a Hubble ballast, as we have seen. Very nice condition label. So that definitely helps in figuring out what this is. And uh, we already saw the insides. One thing I noticed on the arm here is it's a GE. So this arm is not original to this light. I wonder what used to be on here. Uh, probably was some type of GE fixture and then it went bad. So they replaced it with this Hubble item here. Too bad that I can't see uh, what model this is. I tried to do a quick little search online and I can't find anything about this fixture. So we'll definitely clean this up here and we have our lens and our reflector and we'll clean all of this up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with all of that. So the photo cell looks pretty done. As you can see in there that's pretty corroded. We'll take a look at the, the sticker here. It is an area lighting research, very common brand to have in these uh, fixtures at the time. We do have a date here on the end. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's either a nine or a three of 85. So 1985 uh, is when this around that time, I would say. Could have been then or, or afterward, because that's when this was made, uh, that this fixture was made. So at least we have a little date there to go off of. So I'll have to get a new one of these, and I do believe I actually have one. Uh, one came with a rude lighting wall pack that I picked up recently as well. And um, it's a brand new one of these, if I remember correctly, the style. And uh, that'll get put back uh, in here. So here's the before and after cleaning up the refractor. Wow, is that a difference. Quick update on what is happening here. I have had the world's hardest time trying to get out the screw that was rusted in there, got a new one in, and wouldn't you know it, the head of that one broke off too, so I was done with that. I decided to drill out two of uh, these areas here, as there's four of them around the sides. It's much easier to drill out aluminum than whatever the screw was made out of. So we went ahead and drilled those out, found some metal screws that uh, we have laying around here that don't get used for nothing, and uh, that worked well. They're, they're in there, there's some threads as you can see, and I put some marker on there as you can also see, the red, and use that to transfer where the holes are going to be. So I slowly drilled holes in the reflector here, and when that gets put on, Let's see, and that gets put on like this. You can see everything lines up perfectly. So we'll have three points of contact, which is better anyway than just two. But that's where we're currently sitting. I've cleaned up the socket, ballast, and igniter as, long as, as well as its mounting bracket. And 
I'm not too sure about the quality of this. As you can see, it's very corroded and very far gone. I had to bust out one of the sides here just to get it off of the bracket. You can see it's again very corroded. The only thing that is important about it are these connectors at the end. They're the smaller size than normal. And that's needed to connect to our igniter here, which is presumably still good. So, I need a socket, pretty much. And I need a photocell, because that's also no good anymore, obviously. Well, in the shop here, I have this fixture sitting around. I brought it in a long time ago to be used, and uh, some other lights have since taken this one's place. So this one doesn't really have a use anymore. I've been meaning to take it home. But I think it's time to part it out and uh, give its parts for a new purpose. And uh, the, the positive thing about this, uh, salvaging this fixture, is I think it was only $8 at Goodwill, so that doesn't matter much. That's cheaper than a socket at the hardware store, especially a pulse-rated one, if they even had one. Um, so I need a socket, I need a bulb, because there was no bulb in this fixture, and I, of course, need a photocell. And this has all of that. And the other thing that's uh, just fine about using this housing is it's cracked as you can see right here. So the issue is the water and stuff may get into the fixture if it was ever used outside for its intended purpose. So not too sad about taking this apart, but we will get some good, some good parts for our much more interesting little Hubble area light here. Here we are, almost put all together, and we have the new socket. That's much better than the old one. The ballast is put back into place. We have a new grounding wire because the old one broke off. We have the igniter here. I tried to clean the contacts the best I could. It wasn't perfect, but we'll see. And we have the new photo cell. So, we're gonna go ahead and put the rest together. The one big issue here is that the socket is only gonna be held on by one screw because we do not have a screw over here anymore. Now that's not that big of an issue, at least I don't think it'll be, because this will hold it in place. There's a hole in the middle of the reflector that'll keep it center, and these other two screws will push it down onto here, making friction, and also keeping it from falling out naturally. So we should be just fine. We'll go ahead and put the rest of it together. With all the screws in place, the socket is definitely not going anywhere. There's no play in that. So these two are definitely putting enough pressure over here to keep that from sliding. I made sure not to over tighten any of these screws. I just did it until they were snug so that uh, we don't have the same issue that has happened over all the years with the rust and all that. So we will continue. And there we are. It's all put back together. It cleaned up really well. You can kind of see inside. I think it was never intended to be perfectly clear. But, you know, it looks just like a mini high-mast fixture. How cool is that? So we're going to go ahead and I'll clean up that arm. And we will put it on the arm and we will turn it on. So I'm going to continue cleaning up the arm. So three hours later... We have the fixture all cleaned up, in addition to the arm here, and the very nice GE logo. We also have the bracket that holds it in place, all shined up. And I would have put it on the arm, but I don't have any bolts at the moment to hold this onto the arm. So, we're going to set it here, like so, and plug it in to see if it even works. So here we go in three, two, one. Definitely a lot of action going on. You can see the high pressure sodium bulb inside and its distribution here on the other side. I wonder if there's something wrong with this igniter. It's definitely doing some funny stuff. 
see if it warms up more or oh there we go we we struck an arc we must not have had one before very orange high pressure sodium very cool it must have had a very unstable arc to start with i don't know how good that igniter is but we'll have to see so there it is warming up of course once I do get bolts for it, I'll show it all put together and on its arm. Even though it's not the original arm, that's how I received it. So we'll keep it together. How cool. It's like a miniature high mast. You can even kind of see the reflector assembly inside shining through there a little bit. Pretty cool. And here we have the fixture installed on its arm. Everything cleaned up and ready to go. So, a very interesting fixture. A very cool story on how I got it. A very high mast type design that is really cool. Of course we can turn this if I had um, two hands. Through magic we can take it off. Of course we have the bulb inside, all shiny and cleaned up. So very, very nice, unique fixture. At the end here I thought I'd share some recent finds. So here's a pair of globes I picked up yesterday at the ReStore. They are definitely antique or vintage. They have a very nice satin type finish to them. Very nice styling. Uh, you can kind of see through it there, so it's a kind of a, um, I don't know if it's like an acid etch type finish, white milky, something like that. But it's very nice, you can see through the uh, through it to the uh, bedspread design there. Definitely tell they're older too because there's some uh, remnants of paint and stuff on them. But very unique globes. I wanted to pick them up in case uh, wherever I end up in the future, if it's a historical place, um, I'll have some nice, some nice globes to go with the architecture of the building. But I'll look for some fittings to put these on so I can uh, show them off in the meantime. So those are pretty cool. Can't pass up a mercury vapor bulb for a quarter. So I got this Sylvania Deluxe White 175 watt one here. And this little tiny pearl light bulb. It's 12 volts, 50 watts. It's a little halogen globe. I picked up a, uh, I believe a Satco version of this uh, a while back or something like that. That was also a quarter. This is a newer designed mercury vapor bulb. And we could tell just by the etch here. If I can show it with all of you. See the etch is different compared to the older etch where it was all in a circle here. They got the, uh, uh, the font flat on the top instead of curved with everything else. It doesn't look like it has any hours on it. So it looks brand new. Not bad. Uh, it's the first 175 watt mercury vapor bulb I actually have out here. So if I ever come across a fixture, I'll at least have a bulb to go with it. Not bad for a quarter. Pick this up at Goodwill. It's a really nice old refractor or reflector, as they call it here, a flower type set. I really like these as Christmas lights. These are my favorite uh, when it comes to the miniature ones. Brand new in this package here. So here's the front of the packaging. And there's the back. And uh, I'll share with you the lights themselves. So this is a much older set when they didn't have a fused plug. So what they did is they had these fuse bulbs. And you have two of them. So you can see there is a, a filament down in there. It's not going to want to focus on it. Let me try. It's not going to want to focus on it. I really want to share it with all of you. Oh, there we go. So you can see the filament down in there. And that's the uh, that's the fuse. 
Of course, we have another one right here. And then we have the lights themselves. This is a set of blue, my favorite color, naturally. So blue with clear reflectors, as they call them, or ref refractors, or flowers, whatever you want to call them. And I have them up here on the wall. And they just find their way up to the light there. So very cool, very nice old set, brand new in its styrofoam packaging. And the uh, downside about that is that the styrofoam starts to stick to the wires after all those years, so I had to pick it all off. But it uh, works well. I, I really, I really like it. As always, I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.